Hi hey everyone, welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics. And in this video, we're going to be talking about set partitions and congruence mod m. The idea is that we want to have a division principle for sets also. And in order to do that, we need to talk about chopping a set up into blocks, and each of the blocks has the same size. So first off, what is a block? So we're going to start with a, a finite set A, and a non-empty subset of A is called a block. And what a set partition of a finite set A is, is a set of blocks uh, with the following properties. So they can't have any overlap with each other. It means they're disjoint. So remember that each of them is non-empty, but also when you, um, but when you intersect any two of them, then the intersection is empty. And also the union of the blocks is A. So that a set partition is just a fancy way of saying we're taking our set and we're chopping it up into subsets and each subset has to have something in it and everything in A has to be in one of those subsets. And so then what the division principle says is, is that if you have a set partition into K blocks and each block has the same cardinality, or which means size, and that size is M, then the number of blocks is the size of A over M and the size of the blocks is the number of things in A decided, divided by K. So let's look at some examples. Let's say A is the set of numbers from one to 20. Then we could chop this up into the small half and the big half by letting B1 be the numbers from one to 10 and B2 be the numbers from 11 to 20. We could also instead divide it up into small, small, medium, medium, large, and large, um, and chop it up into four blocks of size five instead. So that's, that's a nice example, but it turns out to not be that interesting mathematically. And so a better example is to think about dividing these numbers up into the odd ones and the even ones. And um, in this case, there are two blocks, and so each block has size 10. And what we're gonna do right now is generalize that notion in terms of congruence. So these, we're gonna call these to be one mod two, and we're gonna call these to be zero mod two. The odds are one mod two and the evens are zero mod two. So let's now look at an example where we divide up into more blocks and it turns out the most natural way to divide into four blocks is to take the odd ones and split them into two sets of five and take the even ones and split them in two sets of five. So we could look at the small odd ones, but that turns out to be not so interesting usually. So instead we're gonna look at every other odd one. So that's one, five, nine, 13, 17, uh, and we're gonna look at the others, which are three, seven, 11, 15, and 19. And then the even ones, we're gonna divide those up into the ones that are divisible by four. And the ones that are even but not divisible by four, including two, six, 10, 14, and 18. And we're gonna give these names. This one's called one mod four. This one's called three mod four. This one's called uh, four or zero, maybe we'll say zero mod four. And this one is called two mod four. So when I was in grad school, spending way too much time doing number theory homework, 
I started to have dreams about the difference between primes that are one mod four and three mod four. Um, if you start having those dreams, uh, you should let us know. <laughs> so, um, all right. So this is a way um, of dividing up into four blocks, each have size five. Something else we could do is divide up into five blocks, each of size uh, four. So um, how are we gonna do that? Well, let's, let's think about the multiples of five. Um, and then let's uh, add one to each of those. So that's six, 11, 16, 21. 21 is not an option, so we'll include one instead. Let's um, look at adding two to those. Uh, so we get um, 17, 12, 17, 7, 12, 17, and 22. 22 is not an option, it's not in the set A. Um, okay, we can kind of keep on going here. So 8, 13, 18, and 3. And what's left? 9, 14, 19, and 4. All right. So one way of thinking about these five sets is that they relate to the last digit of the number. So B1 is all the numbers that um, end in 5 or 0. B2 is the numbers that end in 6 and 1. Uh, and we're going to give these a name. So this one is... Uh, B2 is 1 mod 5, B3 is 2 mod 5. I guess if I were more organized, I would have indexed them so that the name of the subset equaled the name of what it was mod 5. But, uh, okay. And this very first one is 0 mod 5. All right. So these are uh, some ways of making set partitions of the numbers from 1 to 20. You can also make two sets of size 10 or 10 sets of size 2. So what's, what's going on here? It turns out that one of the most natural ways of making a set partition is of the set of integers or the set of integers in a range is to look at um, what it means to be mod. And sometimes the word congruence is used here too. And the definition of mod, two numbers, A and B, are equivalent or congruent mod M. And usually, I didn't know how to do this with typing, but usually there are th three bars in the equal sign there. But it means that M divides B minus A. So for example, um, in this set nine, 14, 19, and 4. Let's set little b to be 4, and then notice that 9 is equivalent to 4 mod 5, since 5 divides 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. And similarly, 14 is congruent to 19 mod 5 since 5 divides 19 minus 14, which is 5. So in other words, to be the same mod m means that you have the same remainder uh, when you divide when you divide by m and we often work with um, often people like to work with small numbers mod m and so they would say that uh, we would look at look at the remainders 
when you divide by m. And so you would then get 0 as a possible remainder, or 1 as a possible remainder, all the way up to m minus 1 as a possible remainder. So this idea of um, mods gives us a way of separating integers into different categories. And we're very familiar with this from um, working with arithmetic on a clock, but it turns out it has a huge number of applications, most of which we won't get to in this class because they are more related to cryptography, which is math 360, or error correcting codes, which is math uh, 460. So, um, but there are a lot of nice combinatorics problems that use mods, and so we wanted to just let you know, let you know what they are. Okay, so that's it for today, and see you next week.